Buddha Bandit, the heavy hitter. With somebody about fecal matter on a wall, or someone urinating at you, or they hang on your every word, or uh, someone attempting to stab you, or someone saying they're going to kill you. I, I, I don't think my wife's ever mentioned to me once in nine years that someone attempted to stab her, and that's just not a common thing. Come in. They told us the whole thing. He said at first I was just was, when I was doing them, I didn't have any intent or nothing, but since I was right into it, I said go all the way, kill him. Deemed too dangerous, Harbin is taken to segregation. It's the first step on the way to solitary confinement. Identify yourself. This is Sergeant Yossi, the IP unit. Officer Rivera. Thank you. Officer Rivera. The DDU is the infamous disciplinary unit at Walpole, a prison within a prison with one of the highest levels of security in the United States. We have inmates in there that can be sentenced up to 10 years for disciplinary offenses within the institution. Um, it's a punishment designed housing unit. It's not for rehabilitative purposes, it's to punish. There's really no other lower place you can go than here. As far as if you have, if you're a disciplinary problem, this is it. This is DDU. But there's nowhere else he can go. Hell is next from here. These are inmates that are assaulted disruptive throughout the department um, and they're segregated 23 hours a day they're allowed out uh, one hour a day five days a week they are repetitive offenders they're people that have been through the system two three times and, and they're here again compassion i have no compassion for any of them Like this, right? How many would it take you to fill up on this? Well, I'm not really sure how much it would fill, fill me up. I'm being told that's, uh, that's, normal. that's official. You're all set. Huh? You're all set. Yeah, I'm all set. You stick it in your ass. Okay, it's okay. They fuck all seven days a week, every single chance they get. This is a horror house. They feed us cold food. And when we complain about it, they claim we'll look into the issue. Nothing is done. What was it that you did that got you into prison in the first place? In prison, I'm in prison for killing uh, police people. DDU inmates are allowed three showers a week, lasting 15 minutes each. A three shower door. Even this simple act requires an intense level of security involving the supervision of at least three officers. I think you could do this job every day for 20 years? No way. Every day come in here and do this. Ah, Every day. <laughs> They come out here for recreation uh, one time uh, every day. Uh, they're allowed to come out here and they're separated uh, from each other just to prevent any problems or fights or anything like that. So they're placed in these cages. These people try to hamper and oppress. They do it very sneakily though. They, they're very clever. They're very smart. Um, uh, they're, they're professionals when it comes to that. I've been here since May 30th, 1994. I have no TV, no radio. I get no visits, no phone calls. I'm not allowed to get no newspapers. I'm not allowed to get no magazines. It's basically isolated. Oh, I know people got that say. I slashed my throat. He slashed the officer's throat. Yeah, that was... Which was I swear. It was bigger. It's healed over time, but it's still there. Every now and then I'll rub it and it reminds me of that day, you know. You never get that out of your head.
May 29, 1990. And of course, my poor wife, uh, my poor wife would never get that out of her head. I was transferred for the press, but originally assaulting an officer in 90. They want to give me the worst of the worst. And this is what I end up with. Secure 144. Exactly that to me. The walls, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, locked up. That's inhumane. That's inhumane. You're going back to Albert Speer, Hitler's architect, right? This is like a Nazi concentration camp. Break the man, break the man, break the man until he turns around and he either commits suicide or he goes insane. That's what this is all about. Thank you. Charlie Chase is considered the most violent and unmanageable inmate at Walpole. Originally convicted of armed robbery and murder, he has racked up a record 132 disciplinary offenses behind bars, earning him the longest sentence ever in the DDU. Yeah, that's right. Get him down. Get him. Yeah. Um, as far as Charlie's concerned, he's stripped all the time. His cell is shaken down because he's a major um, escape risk as well as a threat to the security of the institution. He's caught all the time with makeshift contraband. He's caught with weapons. Okay. He's got a swastika painted right here, Steve. He's got, oh, two, two, he's got one on his chest, too. He's very disruptive down here. I don't think there's been one consistent month that he's behaved himself, so his time down here isn't counting, and that goes on a month-to-month -month basis. Do you think he's crazy? Crazy? Tries to come off like that, but theoretically, I don't think he's crazy, no. Given his often bizarre behavior, Charlie's lawyers question whether solitary confinement is in fact driving him insane. Hey, Along with 10 other DDU inmates, Charlie is named in a class action lawsuit claiming that the DDU employs cruel and unusual punishment. All this that you're witnessing is a conspiracy to keep a good man down. That's all it is. He's a clown. Now it's not the right opinion, but he is. How long have you been in here, Charlie? How long have I been here? Yeah. Uh, six years this this year. When are you getting out? I don't know. I got another nine years left. Yeah, they took a lot of good time from me, you know? Like I said earlier, it's it's like a conspiracy to set me up to leave me here, you know what I mean? Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Had our problems down here. A lot of it's... Uh, and with forced moves in the cells, uh, uh, inmates refusing to come out of their cells, refusing to exit their cells. So a team would be put together, more protective gear, and we'd try to get him out. Some DDU inmates are considered so dangerous that it can require as many as six officers in full body armor to extract them from their cells. This particular move involves inmate Charlie Chase. For legal reasons, such incidents are always videotaped by prison officials. You accept that if you violate rules and regulations that you're going to be punished. But then there's a fine line between what's punishment and what's torture. You know, a guy that's behaving in, a, in a, uh, an odd manner because of being psychologically unbalanced is a lot different than what I knowingly did. I escaped. I mean, I knowingly knew what I was doing. But an inmate that's uh, having a psychotic episode and as a consequence of that behavior is put into DDO, something's very wrong with that. 
him. That I have a problem dealing with. Hey, go home tomorrow morning. What are you wrapping up? What's it been like for you? Hey, no, no, What do you think it's like? It's been hectic. It's been hectic. If we put microwaves and uh, and refrigerators and washing and dryers in their cells, they'd find something else to complain about. Now, I mean, you can see their living conditions are not that bad. Some of the most dangerous inmates here show serious symptoms of mental illness. Hands right, your mouth. And for the security unit, dealing with these individuals can be intensely frustrating. Well, this inmate sent a letter to one of the mental health workers. He's been sending letters to everybody. So I'm just going to go through it and see what we've got here. A lot of it is just nonsense stuff. Aggravation type things. And there's a nice little package of something here. I have no clue what it is. I'm starting to get an aroma of it now and it smells like human regurgitation. You know how many letters I've gone through of yours over the last couple of months with with feces in them and everything else in them? I mean, I don't really want to open it up because the letter stinks and I'll probably stink up this whole room when I unseal this bag. So what uh, did, uh, did you... Was a handwriting analysis expert, you know, hired to detect that that was my handwriting? It's, I mean, not, it's not needed. So you saying that there's no possible way that another inmate could have forwarded that, you know? No, I'm just asking you if you wrote it. I'm not. I'm not here to to critique the uh, the contents of the letter. I don't think there's a need to send it to a lab or to have it analyzed. I'm just asking you, did you write the letter? Makes you feel like you want to do something to the guy to make it permanently stop, you know, deal with it uh, directly in different ways, but it, it makes you feel pretty disgusted. Do we have to screen every single piece of mail that you generate? Does it, ha does it have to come to that? I, I hope it doesn't. It's just, it'd just be tedious for me, you know what I mean? I don't feel like checking your mail every single day. I have no comment. Well, about the end of this. Come on. This individual also uh, threw a nice big cup full of human feces on the clergyman as the clergyman was standing by his cell trying to help him out. The inmate proceeded to stab him in his arm and then throw a big fluffernutter container full of human excrement all over the clergyman. Okay. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. In fact, for that last escapade with the uh, religious person, uh, I think that's going to get him some DDU time. And what happens at this point is the attack members up in the gallery are introducing gas into the unit. In the main section of Walpole Prison, a major disturbance has broken out in one of the cell blocks. We're denied permission to film during the incident and are only now allowed briefly to see its aftermath. I'm going to go down with the lieutenant. We're going to just make a round in the unit, see how things are going, take a peek in the cells, pull in the doors, just to get a general feel for what's going on. When you're doing something like that, maybe a connoisseur will stop you and they'll, they'll let you know what's up, give you a little feedback as to what's going on in that unit. How'd you end up in this thing? I seen you come up for breakfast, right? Yeah, I didn't get caught up in that stuff. This occurred because the inmates that were put in here were previously in a, a regular population block. They they had yard privileges, they had uh, chow hall privileges, and I guess it's their way of protesting and being returned to higher custody. We'll just go ahead and monitor. Um, we'll monitor for any more ringleaders. If the ringleaders have to come out, they'll be taken out and be brought to SEG. So we'll, uh, we'll wait for the word from the top. How often does this kind of thing happen? Not very often anymore. Not very often anymore. Later, Lieutenant Robert McGinnis shows some of the younger officers a videotape of what Walpole used to be like. This was March 6, 1981. It was a very long day. It started at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning with what we were going to consider routine moves to segregation. Um, of, I think, five or six inmates. I was at cell 15 down the end. And I 
believe it was an inmate on the third tier that was refusing to come out. You ever seen this tape? No, I have never seen this tape. Yeah. They're going in his cell. He's fighting. He's actually stabbed. The captain, you can see the blood. Where were you while this is going on? I'm one of those four or so officers that went down there, yeah. I was at the other end of the tier. We'd gone down. And what happens at this point is the TAC members up in the gallery were introducing gas into the unit. At this point, we've introduced some officers with shotguns. Is that a gas gun? No, shotgun. I just think it was the the strong will of the department to to run its facilities and not allow inmates to run its facilities. And I, I think that concept holds true today that, you know, we run the institutions, not the inmates. say people in law enforcement have the highest divorce rate and this and that and um it always seems to be that they let the, let themselves get stressed out you know they take everything in or they you know being around inmates all the time they're not here because they're the nicest people in uh, in society you know <laughs> and uh prison life in general is depressing you know yeah. how long are you in here for prison for 27 years What'd you do? Second degree murder. Not too long ago, there was an inmate murdered in here. Um, as in other places of the prison. When you think, uh, you know, it's not a dangerous place because you look around and you see, well, everyone's working. This particular incident happened first thing in the morning. Uh, they arrived to work. And uh, by the end of the day, I mean, one was dead. So that's the kind of things that transpire. Right in this area here. One of those things. There have been staff members over the years that have turned into alcoholics as a result of this job. Um, we've had people commit suicide in this business. And I really think a lot of it is because they don't do something to relieve their stress outside of work. Well, no. What happens if you hear that alarm is always in the back of your head? When's it going to go off? Uh, what do I do if the alarm goes off? What's my job? If everybody does their little job, then we should be okay. It could be anywhere from a homicide to just uh, one inmate yelling at the officer or punching another inmate that the officer felt it the need to freeze the place up. That stress level is always there, yes. That's probably why our life expectancy is an average of 55 years. I'm not going to stay here till I'm growing old, you know what I mean? Today at Walpole State Prison, inmate Louis Vega is going home. In just 30 minutes, he will leave solitary confinement in the DDU, be given a $50 check, and go directly back into society. How long has it been, Louis? As long as it's been, five years, some months. How's it feel now? It was good, you know, it's, it's how it should feel, you know, after leaving these walls. I think that when an inmate finishes his sentence and commits some sort of heinous crime within a short period of time, there's a hue and cry that, well, he never should have been released. Well, he had to have been released. He finished his sentence. And, you know, do we rehabilitate people? People want to have to change themselves. Most of the people that we see in our system are just career criminals and doing time is just part of that business. It's a temporary setback. I can't say I'm never coming back because where I come from, you know, it ain't um, cookies and milk. So and I'm going back home, back to the same place. I'm not going to deny where I'm from and I ain't going to run from it either. Oh, man. I want to give you a They're seeing you and that 
they're looking at you the way you, you know, conduct yourself, and they may try to emulate that. They may try to resent that, uh, your authority Sorry. figure. Mm, no, no. Believe it or not, you know, it's like with anyone you meet or anything you do, you, you leave something behind no matter where you go or what you do. You leave something behind with somebody. I believe that, you know. Maybe you can leave a little something good that when they do get back out into society, you know, maybe, you, maybe you've done a little good. It's not too often that you feel like you can, you've done some good. I'm not going to stay here till I'm growing old, you know what I mean? And you're surrounded by concrete and bars, and all you're hearing all day is slamming doors and metal hitting metal, you know? I mean, it, it gets to you, you know? I've seen some people retire and two months down the road drop dead of a heart attack. It's all thrown away, you know? And that's not what I want to do. Your plans when you get out of here in 20 years? Oh, 20 years. I couldn't even tell you. Um, I'm hoping that I can have my kids in school. You know, that's pretty much how I'm thinking of them instead of me. As long as I'm living and happy, I'm all set. <laughs> Pretty much. See, this, this is our I seniority list. When you start make, when you make it to the front page, it's big of the seniority list. Right now, well, Kenny's on the, Kenny and Johnny are, are on second the second page. page, and I'm at the. Well, I might have snuck into the sec, second yeah, page. I'm after that. These guys up at the top, boy, they're sitting pretty. <laughs> yeah. We wish we were them. They're dead in six months. You know, one foot in the grave. Hey. Right. I <laughs> wish I was 30, 30, years. 30 years, 27, 25, 26, 25. You know, once they leave, you know, it's they're all done. Of course, don't ask what their mental capacity is. After That's right. Years. That's not the they just want to stay so they can show off this front page. I'll still be here. The violence at Walpole poses a constant challenge to the men entrusted with keeping order. But as violent as Walpole may seem, it is a remarkably safer institution than it was a decade ago, due in part to the underappreciated work of the corrections officers.